The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 321. Blessed are you, disciples, because you put your good will to interpret my word, so that you can develop the gifts that you have and apply them for the good of your brothers. You are already in the time when men feel restlessness about the eternal, about that life that is beyond the ephemeral human existence. And you, who have been my disciples at this time, always remember that the key that opens the door to spiritual wisdom is love. Throughout my teachings, I have explained to you how this life on earth serves as a school, an experience, crucible, and development of the spirit but that the supreme knowledge of the spiritual life will only be achieved when he has left matter and finds himself in the infinite valley beyond the material. Admire the simplicity of my doctrine, which can be applied to any practice, to any order, because its light is the light that illuminates and encourages the universe. Its essence, spilling over your understanding, reveals to men the way to improve yourself until you reach the spiritual perfection. That essence is the good that exists in your God as an inexhaustible source of inspiration in your life. My doctrine is simple and therefore understandable to everyone since you all have spirit. Where complication, mystification, or materialism intervenes, my truth is not present, which is light. Seek simplicity, love humility, and thus the secrets and the most impenetrable mysteries will appear before your understanding like the pages of a book showing all its content clearly speaking to you of mysteries and secrets that men have not been able have not wanted or have not been able to clarify I mean everything that which in my arcanum I have reserved for the knowledge of my children I am not talking about what you will never know for being only in domain of your father in the second era, I came to give you a teaching through which I have made men understand that they did not only constitute of matter, but in each one of them lived a being whose life was superior to the material and whose abode was not forever in this world, but in a realm infinitely higher than that of the earth. That doctrine, profound until eternity, was nevertheless expressed in a simple and pure way so that all men understood it since it was up to all to know it. That doctrine was the preparation for humanity to fully enter the spiritual field in this third era, because now I have humanized my voice again to make myself heard by men. I have come to them to expand that lesson, to develop it and explain it, contemplating that this humanity already is able to understand the meaning of everything that was originally a promise. I will gather all men and all peoples around my message. I will call them as the shepherd to the sheep, and I will prepare them for the peace of a sheepfold where they will take refuge from the wind and storms. You will see how even many apparently do not have the slightest trace of faith or spirituality. They preserve in the purest of their spirit the immortal principles of spiritual life. You'll see how many of those who seem to you to have no worship carry an indestructible altar in the depths of their being. Before this interior altar, men will have to prostrate spiritually, to mourn their faults, their bad deeds, and their offenses, sincerely sorry for their disobedience. There before the altar of consciousness, pride will collapse in a man, leaving men to consider themselves superior by their races. Then will come the renunciations, the restitution, and finally peace as the legitimate fruit of love and humility of faith and goodwill men who nurture for now only ambitions of power and earthly greatness know their strongest adversity is spirituality that's why they fight it and when they sense the fight that is already approaching the battle of the spirit against evil they fear losing their possessions and therefore resist the light that in the form of inspiration amazes them at every turn. Who do you think is the victor in the end, the spirit or the flesh? Certainly the triumph will be of the spirit, who, after having been a slave of the world, will now be the one who dominates the passions of the flesh. It will be the time when you will give to God what is God's, 
into the world what is of the world. With a prophetic word I tell you on this day that a time is coming when all the peoples of the earth harmonize spiritually. Who among you will be able to carry out this work of strength and light to fulfill my prophecy? No, beloved people, there is no man capable of making light in this darkness that surrounds you. As always, I will be the one who dissipates the shadows, who calms the storms, and leaves you united all around my table of love, as true brothers, as children who are of one father. However, I will not be alone in the fight. This people will collaborate with me. These disciples will be my interpreters towards humanity. They will be my faithful witnesses before the searchers. They will be the instruments that serve me to give the world proof of my power, of my charity, of my presence. You will never carry the full weight of my cross, I tell you again. But the part that you have to carry, how delicate it is. Your responsibility is great. The struggle will become intense, but it will always be encouraged by favorable events that will be proof that I am with you. They will be like my voice that speaks to your heart. How will your spirit rejoice with each town that wakes up to the light of the new day, the light of the third era, in which all men will unite to build a spiritual temple and homage to your God, in this inner sanctuary where the inexhaustible flame of faith and love will shine? Now you feel very distant from peace, harmony, fraternity, and you are right, because it is so different in each man, the concept about God, about life, about truth. It seems that there were many gods, and that there was a god for each man. Have you not observed that at least within nature that surrounds you, how everything obeys only one principle, how everything follows the same order, and everything harmonizes in a single law? If there were several orders, if you had discovered different laws than those I have revealed to you, and someone who, if it were not me, I would have revealed a truth greater than mine, you would be right, for there would be differences in your beliefs, in your worship, concepts, and ways of living. But I tell you again, that light is the only one that has shone from eternity on the firmament of your human and spiritual life. It will not be a sacrifice for any man to convert to this doctrine, nor will he have to break his understanding or give up everything good, true, or just that you bring in your heart. The only thing that my work pursues is the spirituality of all men, because in spirituality you will have to identify and understand each other. In spirituality they will see the names disappear, the external forms of their religions, which have been the cause of their spiritual distancing since each one has interpreted their God in a different way. Then, when all their different paths approach spirituality, they will understand that all they need to free themselves from their materialism was to be able to translate into a spiritual form what they always took in a material sense. Thus, he who prostrated himself before an image to see my presence in it will later know how to feel me in his spirit without needing to create any way to represent myself. The one who made long walks to get to a place where he had been told I was there and that there he could find his health. He will learn that it is not necessary to move from one point to another on earth to find me, when through the divine gift of prayer men can find me at every moment of his life without distinction of place. Then men will purify themselves with sincere repentance and will confess in spirit to spirit with my divinity, placing your consciousness in that spiritual act. There will be spiritually no more bread or more wine than the essence of my word, the essence in which they will feed men, strengthening themselves in love, in righteousness, in justice, in charity. And those who live studying the scriptures of past times, who have also divided in the sects and congregations due to different ways of interpreting those words, will also find in spirituality the approach because the elevation of the way of analyzing and interpreting will reveal to some and others the true essence they had never found because they had always given divine revelation a human or material sense. Spirituality is what I ask of men at this time. Within what is lawful, they will see their greatest ideals fulfilled and their greatest conflicts. In a time of confusion, 
my word will appear in the world as a boat of salvation. Men will be able to rise to a new life of light, peace, and brotherhood. Soon humanity will be able to contemplate the dove of peace flying over the nations, carrying its symbolic olive branch. My ray has descended to you, and although you did not see it materialized, your spirit does feel the presence of my light that illuminates it. You will already discover in your being something more than the organs of your body. They will be the gifts, faculties, powers, and attributes of the spirit, which have slept in men for many centuries. You will find neither substance nor form, from which I tell you, it will not be your science that will discover that mystery. Until now, only what you have found in the mind and felt in the senses is for what you exist. But the time will come when you will understand that true values exist in the spiritual, in that life that you have not wanted to know. Then your existence will be illuminated by a new light revealing the great mysteries and the most beautiful teachings. I will bless you because at last you will collaborate with your Father for unfolding of life and the evolution of your spirit. Now you will find yourself parked without being able to realize it, without noticing the end of a stage and the beginning of another, without discovering the meaning of your trials or succeeding in dissipating the divine signs that each step I give you. You do not know if you are inside or outside of me, nor if you are alive or dead for spiritual life, because still your sensations are asleep in your being. Truly I tell you, only my voice can wake you up, only my call can resurrect you, and for this reason I have come, full of mercy to save you. My light is already approaching each heart, it is already quietly penetrating your understanding, as a thief penetrates into the middle of the night, in a bedroom on tiptoe without making the slightest noise. When my voice makes itself heard in a spiritual way in humanity, men will feel something vibrate that always has been in them, although without being able to manifest itself freely. It will be the spirit who, encouraged by the voice of his Lord, rises up answering my call. Then a new era will begin on earth because you will stop seeing life from below and begin to contemplate it, know it, and enjoy it from the heights of your spiritual evelation. See how my love lets you wake up by yourselves. It comes to your aid to rise from the deep lethargy of materialism. I contemplate you, little ones, and I want you to be great, that you come to encompass with your powers, intelligence, and senses, everything that is granted by me to be yours. Let the intuition awaken, the spiritual sensitivity to appear. Let your feelings begin to vibrate with inspiration. May your heart be cleansed of sins. May your understanding be cleared. Fight for your identification with each other. Work to harmonize all. Fight that constant hatred in which you have lived on earth until you get to exterminate it. Seek that good established itself in the world. Make your life ennobled by the practice of my doctrine that emanates the law of love and justice. Then you have fought for the noblest of all causes and your spirit will have come very close to me. The destruction of evil, which you have wanted to eternalize in your world, which, although you may not believe it, many have become their God, since to him they consecrate all their strength, the thoughts of their being. It must be your goal, fighting against it, inspired by the idea of getting to exterminate it and throw it out of your life. For that blessed fight, you will gather faith, will, courage, strength, patience, and perseverance. You will not be alone in that battle either. I will put my strength in your arm and my light in your intelligence. I will make wonders of each of your works when they are inspired by charity and love. Take this lesson and keep it in your hearts. Put all of your will at the service of the desire to know you better. How? Trying to find in your spirit his gifts, powers, missions, restitutions, and how much he keeps as your inheritance. Do not be discouraged if you watch the days go by without discovering anything of it in yourself. Pray and meditate. Practice my examples and lessons. When you least think, it will be manifesting some gift of your spirit through your works. 
Open your eyes and soften your senses so that you perceive that invisible world that vibrates around you. You have insisted on ignoring that spiritual life that beats incessantly inside, outside, and in you without imagining that you are so closely linked to it as you are to the air you breathe. It is that you become too interested in material science and have forgotten spiritual wisdom. You know that to penetrate the infinite ocean of spiritual life, it is necessary to have strength, goodness, faith, and love towards God. It seems difficult and hard to you, always preferring the human sciences, which do not require you of that purity and evelation that the study of the spiritual requires. If you knew that there was no work of yours in which I have no influence, some spiritual being would seem inconceivable to you. Yet it is so. Beyond your human life, there is a world of spirits. Your brothers, being invisible to men, they fight each other to conquer you. That struggle between them comes from the difference of evolution in which one and the other finds themselves. While beings of light elevated by the ideal of love, harmony, peace, and perfection, they are showering with light the path of humanity, always inspiring good, revealing everything that is for the good of men. The beings that still retain the materialism of earth, who have not managed to shed their egoism and their love of the world, or that nurture human tendencies and inclinations indefinitely, are they that sow on the path of humanity with confusion, darkening minds, blinding hearts, enslaving wills to use men, turning them into instruments for their plans, or taking them as if they were their own bodies. While the spiritual world of light struggles to conquer the spirit of humanity to open a gap to eternity, while those blessed legions work unceasingly, multiplying in love, becoming nurses by the bed of pain, Counselors at the right hand of the man who carries the weight of a great responsibility. Youth counselors, childhood guardians, companions of those who live forgotten and alone. The legions of beings without the light of spiritual wisdom, without the evolution of love. Also they work ceaselessly among humanity, but the purpose is not to facilitate the path to the spiritual kingdom. No, the idea of these beings is completely opposite. It is their intention to dominate the world, to continue to be owners of him, perpetuate himself on earth, dominate men, making them slaves and instruments of his will. In short, not to be stripped of what they had always believed theirs, the world. Well, disciples, between one and the other there is an intense struggle. A struggle that they do not contemplate with your bodily eyes but whose reflections are felt day by day in your world. For this humanity to be able to defend itself and free itself from bad influences, it needs to have knowledge of the truth that surrounds you. You need to learn to pray with the Spirit and also know how many gifts you have clothed in this being to be able to use them as weapons in this great battle of good against evil, of light against the darkness, of spirituality against materialism. Precisely the spiritual world of light works and fights preparing everything for the world to reach one day to get on the path of spirituality. Reflect on all this and you can imagine how intense this fight will be for your God brothers who work for the salvation of men, a struggle that is for them a chalice in which you give each instant the gall of ingratitude. Since you are concrete to receive from them all the good they do you, but without putting never a thought on your part to help them in their struggle. Few are those who know how to join them. Few are those who know how to be sensitive in their inspirations and obedient to their directions. But how strong they walk through life, how safe they feel, what enjoyments and inspirations delight your spirit. Most men struggle between the true influences without deciding on one, without giving themselves totally to materialism, but without taking an effort to get rid of it to spiritualize your life. That is, to invoke it for the good, by knowledge and spiritual strength. These are in full internal struggle. Those who have given themselves completely to materialism, without worrying more about the voice of the conscience, and ignoring everything that relates to their spirit, they no longer fight. They have been defeated in combat, believe they have succeeded. They think they are free. 
and they do not realize that they are prisoners and that it will be necessary for legions of light to come into darkness after them so that they may be set free. I send this message of light to all peoples of the earth so that it may be the awakening of men so that they realize which is the enemy that they have to fight until defeating it and which are the weapons that without realizing they carry them. Truly I tell you, if at this time I had come to you as a man, your eyes would have had to see my fresh and bleeding wounds still, because the sin of man has not ceased, nor have they wanted to redeem himself in the memory of that blood shed for me on Calvary, and that it was a proof of my love for humanity. I have come in spirit to avoid you the affront of contemplating the work of those who judged me and sentenced me on earth. All is forgiven, but there is in each spirit something of what I have poured out for everyone on the cross. That breath and that blood do not believe that they were diluted or lost. They represented the spiritual life that I have spilled from that moment on all men. But by that blood that sealed my word and confirmed everything I spoke and did on earth, men will rise up in pursuit of the regeneration of their spirit. My word, my works, and my blood are not and will not be in vain. Yes, sometimes it seems to you that my name and my word have almost been forgotten. You will suddenly see how they arise again, full of vigor, life, and purity, like a seed that despite being incessantly fought, does not die ever. Neither my word nor my manifestation of this time will die. There will be times when it seems that everything has ended without leaving a trace or traces in the world. But suddenly, when you least think, it will reappear with as much or greater force the doctrine of spirituality that I have come to teach you. My patient work through your understanding will not be in vain, since if at that time I poured out symbolically my life through that blood to teach you love, now I have come to spill my spirit upon you to open the way of evelation towards eternity. But if my blood was not sterile, less so will be the light of my spirit. Now you cannot measure the scope of the word which you are hearing, but your spirit that has the principle of eternity will be able to witness the truth and the fulfillment of what is in this third era, through rude and impure spokesmen and of the spiritual world of light I have came to reveal to the world. Sometimes in your meditations you ask yourself, how will spiritual beings do in space to move from one point to another if at that same moment they are requested in different parts of the earth? Your imagination then makes you see them flying incessantly fast as light from one point to another and from one border to another of the world. You think, how hard and difficult is mission? You say, how painful is restitution? I must tell you that it is not that mission as your mind has imagined it. Those beings, when they have reached the evelation necessary to receive the mission of guides, guardians, advisors, and benefactors, is so extensive their irradiation that they do not need to move from one place or another, since from where they are, they can influence their brothers who need them, from where they can see, hear, feel, and carry out the works entrusted to your charge. Distances disappear for the spirit elevated by wisdom and love, and its scope is in accordance with the evelation it has reached. Now, if you can think that spirit without any evelation will need to move to save distances, since its most precious attributes have not been developed, do not try to imagine the place where that being is to whom your memory invokes, because it is neither close nor distant as I am, who am neither far nor close to you since I am present in everything and everywhere. The only distance that exists between you and God, or between you and a spiritual being, will not be a material distance, but rather spiritual, caused by your lack of preparation, lack of clarity, or disposition to receive inspiration and spiritual influence. Neither put that distance between you and your master, or between you and the spirit world, and always you will enjoy the benefits that my love sheds to those who know how to look for it. You will always have the feeling that the spiritual world vibrates with the hearts of those who are preparing to feel it. If you do not do so, 
How great will be the distance that humanity of this time places between it and spiritual life? It is so great. That is why men of today feel God infinitely distant from them, and imagine heaven distant and unreachable. As time passes, men also feel further and further away from the spiritual kingdom, and have lost the blessed illusion of getting to it, to inhabit it, and when they die, letting the spirit depart from the flesh, only they have the impression of the material, which makes them lose all notion of the spiritual. My message of love at this time comes to erase distances, to remove confusion, to dispel darkness, making the spirit of humanity, which has already inhabited the infinite spiritual valley, praying and meditating, returning to its beginning, finding its essence and revealing it to the man, the mind and the heart of the being that it has been entrusted as an instrument to accomplish a mission on earth. You will see how that apparently great distances may be enough for a moment of spiritual enlightenment to disappear, causing you to experience all the joy that you deprived yourself of for so long while you thought I was distant. Today you are more qualified for your conversion, although to you it seems difficult. I tell you this because your whole being, both spiritually and bodily, has developed, evolved, without stopping along the path of your free will. Just as the mental capacity of the men of today is many times greater than that of men of times past, because its qualities have developed, thus the spirit in its constant experience of life has been developed by what you can understand, conceive, believe, and admit, what the men of other times didn't. That is why I have chosen myself to manifest to humanity, the perfect form, that is, the spiritual one because I know that you are already in a position to understand it. Not so in the times gone when I had to find material ways to make myself heard and understood by men. This is the time when humanity will struggle to establish the spiritual worship of God, but it is natural that it is after the struggle when understanding and calm have already reached the hearts. You, who are listening to me through this doctrine, have managed to strip away prejudices and fanaticism from your heart in any natural and simple way you worship me and feel me inside of you. You can consider yourselves as privileged beings among all humanity and I will take you as precursors of the age of spirituality. My peace be with you. This has been a reading from the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 321. You can download this volume and the other 11 at coachinafight.shop.